Hi, Chetan. Can you hear me? Hi, Clarence. I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you perfectly. Can you see me? I can see you. I do not have a webcam, though. I'm sorry. That's, that's perfectly fine. I just need you to share your screen and teach me what I need to do. Uh, by the way, this video is recorded, so I'll be uploading it into YouTube for people to view. So don't okay. say, just say whatever you need to say. And uh, <laughs> look, uh, just, I'll just be, remember that it'll be on YouTube. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Sure. <laughs> and uh, I'll be making a blog post about your framework when I have time. And uh, this, this video em will be embedded in that in that blog post, and I'll be explaining how to use Asteroid. I I hear you. I appreciate it. Give me one second. I'm sharing my screen. It's going to refresh the browser, OK? No problem. OK, can you see my screen? Oh, hang on. Hang on, hang on. OK, now you can. See anything yet? Oh, uh, I think I can see it soon. Just wait. Oh, I see your screen. Yeah, but you need to change the change the uh, window. Yeah. Yep. 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 Hang on. Asteroid. So why um, why why did you guys create a whole new Joomla template framework? I mean, I thought WordPress would be a lot more popular. Why do you choose Joomla over WordPress to begin with? Um, the decision goes back like you know, a, a lot of fears. So there are two questions there. I try to answer both of them one by one. Why Joomla or WordPress? I think it's really about, for me, it's more about personal preference. I have, uh, even though the whole world finds WordPress very friendly and stuff, I have always found uh, Joomla friendlier and easier That's, to navigate. I, I agree. I, I feel the same way as you. Yeah, and then again, it's 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 really about personal preference, you know, because you read the blog posts online, you 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 know, you look at the popular websites. Uh, their majority of them are in WordPress, and WordPress is leading the way. And I I think it just it gets into the discussion that WordPress uh, at the top, you know, the hierarchy in WordPress, it's really a commercial product, even though it's open source, it is being sold or marketed as a commercial project. Uh, product and Joomla, where it is open source, and even the development and everything in there is managed actually as an open source product. So it is not marketed or managed as a commercial product, even at the very top. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Actually, like, there's a corporation that owns WordPress, right? It's not. That it's is correct. Someone. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I like Joomla a lot better because. I think there's less software conflict because a lot of the there's a lot of things in Joomla you can just do out of the box. You don't have to get right. additional plugins for stuff, and that that helps a lot because if there's software conflicts, there's security issues and performance issues, right? Right, right, right. And and you know, WordPress is a CMS where Joomla is a framework. You know, if you look at it from a programmer that, that's, level, that's surprising yeah, for me because yeah, I always thought that Joomla is a CMS. I don't know why you've equated Joomla it. Is, Joomla is a CMS, but at the same time, you know, you have a lot of inbuilt functionality that WordPress doesn't have. For, I'll give you an example from a, from a non-technical standpoint. Think about it this way. Joomla has inbuilt contact forms. WordPress doesn't have that. So for anything you need to do in WordPress, you need to install a plugin. Where in Joomla, you have majority of the basic things you would need on a website as part of the core. That that is one of the major differences between both of them. And and you know again, WordPress. Uh, if we compare the two, WordPress has a lot of extension developers, a lot of user bigger user base than what Joomla has. So I think the the idea gets kind of different there where WordPress is much more supported if you look at the forums if you look at theme forest you know all the themes are oriented towards WordPress so in in theory WordPress is bigger because it's simpler if we look at it from your point of view or my point of view you know we are the kind of people who are developers but at the same time we are the end users as well i i i'd prefer joomla over wordpress in any case you know? uh, actually the case study uh, that I think your your colleagues at Joomla know about. I did a case study on a, a typical business profile website, and I actually found <laughs> WordPress to be more expensive. And I think I know why. What? The reason is that WordPress is really large, right? But there's a lot of there's huge competition for for downloads or subscriptions. The problem is that that WordPress people are so busy giving out free stuff that when you have to pay for it, you pay through the nose. Right. You know, 
Seven in WordPress, you have tech forms seven and but in Joomla, you know, you have tech forms bed. It's just one of many features, even on coding level, uh, that Joomla has by default. But in WordPress, you just need to install more and more plugins. And as you're doing more and more, obviously, the site requires more maintenance, more update, more maintenance. And then you know, it's expensive as you require a developer. Hello? I'm here. Um, uh, it's 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 not very clear. I'll do a, I'll do something to to fix this up. Just hold a moment, and I'll, 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 I'll get the internet connection working better. Okay, can you I hear me the, now? I can hear you now, but I, I don't know whether it's my connection, or your connection. But I'm going to try something on my end to make sure that's a bit smoother. Okay, okay. Just hold I on. think I'm fine on my end. Okay. Okay, I think things should be better now. Can you hear me? I can hear you. All right, look, uh, yeah, you're right. Joomla is great for developers and end user at the same time. Uh, but just wondering, have you ever have you ever uh, come across a WordPress framework that's similar to what you have in Joomla? Uh, I similar to what we have created in Joomla. There may be, there may be. I don't do a lot of development in WordPress myself personally. I have seen a lot of frameworks, you know, there's there's the Avada theme, you know, the Fusion Builder. They have that. That has pretty much the same options we are offering, or maybe more, a lot more options and stability than what we are offering. And then there are probably other exchange uh, frameworks out there too in WordPress that may be offering the same thing or more than what we are offering in Asteroid and Joomla. So uh, there, there are a lot of frameworks. So okay, I suppose we can dig, dig into it, but. You, you chose Joomla as your platform, your CMS, because it's more friendly to developers. But I, I, I thought of my question again. Look, uh, the, this is a problem in Joomla in the sense that uh, the problem is that our user base is shrinking by percentage. There are new websites using Joomla, but our market share keeps on decreasing at least in the past few years. Do you see that as a problem or not, not relevant at all? I personally... I have not experienced that, that the user base in Joomla is decreasing. I think there was a time back in the day uh, between, you know, when the migration from 1.5 to 1.6 or 1.7 or 2.5 was happening. And, you know, I'm talking 2012, 13, 14, those three years. I think that was the time when this could have been that Joomla was declining and it declined a certain percent probably within those years. And I think uh, it has stayed at particular that particular percentage up again personally I'm, I'm looking at it from my telescope, which is very small here, you know, so bear with me. But personally, I don't think the Joomla market is shrinking anymore. It was shrinking in the past. But I don't feel that myself that it is shrinking anymore. Actually, I, I could I, be wrong. There, there was an acquisition by Joomla Shack for Perfect Web, which is a very, two very big uh, Joomla developers. And actually, I found one thing. It seems that people who aren't focused on English websites really love Joomla. Mm -hmm. That that could be it. My, uh, I mean, apart from the product size business, you know, uh, Asteroid and all the template and extensions we're doing, we, I, I, you know, we do have a full fledged service agency as well. And yep. pretty much all the clients I have, pretty much I'd say 95% of them are out of the US. So they are English based websites. Most of have, the um, majority of them do run a blog as well on WordPress, but that's just for the blog. I mean, they prefer Joomla for their corporate website. I mean, I'm talking about really, really big websites and really, really big companies here, you know? Yeah. Okay. So I, I think 
there's definitely increasing number of users of Joomla even until now. It's just that I think as a percentage of the overall share, we might still be decreasing. But uh, actually, I think I found that people outside the US, a lot of them use Joomla. Oh, yeah, I found that too. And, you know, I found that when we started, you, you know, getting user base for our template. So, you know, before we were doing products uh, back in 2015, you know, uh, before we started doing products uh, here at ChumDev, you know, we were only service oriented. And again, you know, we only had clients over in U.S. There were really uh, something I could count on my fingers, number of clients I had outside of U.S. And even those were, you know, either from the U.K. or Australia or New Zealand and, you know, English speaking. So I felt like all of them uh, were, you know, the, the English user base. But the minute we started pouring out these templates out there, we get a lot of people from these non-English native speaking countries, you know, whether that be uh, the African continent or whether that be the European continent. And, and, and you know, we got a lot China, of requests. Even China and Taiwan. In China and Taiwan as well. I, I, yeah, have, yeah, seen, yeah. I have seen one website. That's Chinese. And I think it's either mainland Chinese or Taiwanese. I don't know which one, but it's done on Joomla, done on the Gantry 5 framework. And yeah, I, I'm surprised that Chinese people would consider using Joomla. And we have, oh, yeah. and we have native Chinese language support, which is not available in WordPress. Right. Right, right. So that, that could be one of the reasons. And again, you're right, I think, because if you look at the lead Joomla developers, I'm not familiar that much with the Joomla Shock and the other company you named. I'm more familiar with, you know, the Akiba Backup, you know, the guy behind Akiba Backup, the guy behind Regular Labs, you know, the Peter. Uh, I use both of them. Yeah, right. I'm a subscriber to on both of them. And I feel like, you know, both of them obviously are out of Europe, you know, uh, out of the U.S. Obviously, they stay in Europe. And I feel like they, they those are the kind of the people that are actually uh, the people behind Joomla. You know, those are the kind of people that are actually powering Joomla. If you look at Virtual Mart, if you look at Hika Shop, uh, if you look at RS Joomla products, I'm talking about like the majority of uh, the, the good extension developers. And these are the extensions I pretty much personally use and prefer on every website I built for my clients. You know, for farms, we always use RS farms. And then for backup, obviously we have a key on pretty much every Joomla install. I mean, that should be made part of the core now. And then, you know, the P extensions from regular labs, you know, previously no number, we, we have those on every site. And again, if you look at majority of these developers, they're all outside of the US. They're all outside of the native English speaking countries. You know, so I think that's where the main power lies is with the non-native English speaking countries. Joomla may have a big user base in the US. It may not. In compared to WordPress, I think it doesn't stand a chance, at least not at the moment. I feel it. But outside the US, I think there is a stronger user community of Joomla that 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 is supporting and and you know using the framework and day-to-day -day extensions as well. Do you think that the Joomla development is managed well or not really? Oh, I, haven't, I, I, haven't been, uh, I haven't been following it, so I, I wish I could comment on that, but I haven't been following it that closely. Mm, but Joomla 4 is coming out soon. Joomla 4 is coming out, and I think we'll we'll see how that rolls out. You know, I'm very excited with the new version, the UI. You know, we have the menu on the left, so uh, all of those things are very exciting. And obviously, we have namespaces. The technology is, is being updated. Uh, you know, it's PHP 7, so we'll have performance improvements. Overall, I'm very excited about it. I don't know how the community will uh, react. I'm wondering, is Asteroid based on CSS Grid or of Bootstrap 4 or both? Asteroid at the moment is on Bootstrap 4. So, you know, we have made it in a manner so that, you know, it, it even though in Joomla 3, we have Bootstrap 2 by default, uh, which is only a matter of months when Joomla 4 comes out. But at the moment, we have Bootstrap 4. So we are running, you know, Bootstrap 3 and 4 side by side. Uh, do you think it's a good move to move to CSS Grid? Or what do you think of that? Because Joomla 4, I, I, Joomla 4 is about both. I think it, 
Right. I think it's good to stay with Bootstrap just because, you know, if, if you're targeting developers, which I think we are, and users as well, but developers are the one who are going to work on, uh, you know, uh, the CSS, who are going to work on the classes, the padding, and all those technical stuff. And I think as, as a developer, I'd prefer uh, Bootstrap over CSS grid. So, and, and you know, uh, Asteroid, even though it is as a stable version, it is in very early stages. We get a lot of feedback every day from our users. We get a lot of emails. Sometimes we get tweets. Sometimes we get free, uh, uh, feedback on Facebook. Sometimes someone comes to our forum. Hey, we should do this. And then we implement that as a feature. So it really is we have a base product. We have an, uh, an idea uh, to follow of where we want to get. And along the side, we're taking all the user feedback, valuable feedback that is coming in and trying to do as much as possible. Can you just tell me a bit more about JoomDev? I, I only dealt with them promoting their stuff and so on, but I don't really know much about your company. Uh, so JoomDev, uh, the company was founded back in the day, let's say 2009, you know, again, it is a service oriented company up until 2014, 15. I was doing templates back in 2012, uh, 13, but that those were under a different name, which is not online anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, really it has been a service oriented company until just about 2015. And that's when I, along with one of my, you know, uh, senior team members decided, hey, you know, maybe down the line we want to, A, contribute to the Joomla. That's why, you know, majority of our templates in the beginning were free, and so Asteroid is free as well. B, see if we can convert our service side business to a product-oriented business. Because uh, we were all tired. Because uh, one of the reasons, I mean, we have American clients, so there is a the American clients, and there's a difference there. You know, on our holidays, sometimes we are working on their holidays. You know, we we get the day off, but there's nothing to do. So there's a obviously the time difference and cultural difference as well. So the product oriented business really gets you to let you do whatever you want to do. So that that's why you haven't heard much about the company because there hasn't been a public presence. It's really been about just getting clients and doing a good job. For are are them, you guys you know? only in India or do you have do you actually have people in the US or something like that? Because I, I met the first person that, that I met was Maria Taylor, who seems to be your right. agent. Right. We I am in India and majority of the team is in India. I have a silent partner who is in the US who has the finances and everything settled over there as well. But other than that, you know, the Maria might be a freelancer that I don't have any knowledge of that I think is probably working for the marketing guy Naveen over there. You know, I think the one you spoke with him. But uh, other I than that- Sanchi. I didn't spoke to Naveen. So yeah, so Sakshi it works. She works with Naveen. They work both work side by side in marketing. So they handle all of the marketing department and everything. But other than that, we don't have a physical presence in the U.S. But I do have a longtime partner, a longtime client I've known for almost a decade now. You know, uh, over in the U.S., we've got the company registered over there and the finances handling as well. Mm, okay, well, I'm ready to mm -hmm. dive into Asteroid. Unless there's anything else you want to tell me that I would like to know. I'd like to answer the very first question you asked, which was why uh, design a framework? Why do Asteroid when there are other frameworks? Around. That was something you asked, right? Yep, yep, yep. Why, why, so, why do you decide to make yeah. it? Right. So I've designed templates using T3, you know, from Joomla Art. I, use I have designed, uh, yeah, I've used uh, Gantry, you know, the older I, I, version. The one, that, the, the one that I like the most so far is Gantry 5. Right. So I've used Gantry 4. I've used Gantry 5. I've used Helix framework. I also use Helix and, as well. Uh, Helix. Right. I, I've, well, I will, the, I posted an article what what your frameworks have worked with before. I think, if all the frameworks you have mentioned, I've used before. I think it's just the three. Yeah. I'm going to learn Asteroid today. Right. So these these three are the main frameworks. And the reason to develop Asteroid was uh, out of all these three, you know, T3, even though it's stable and all, we just never have been able to make it work properly. It's just, you know, the, the from a development end, end point, it's just so complicated to work in, you know? Yes, I know T3 is too complicated. It's not very easy to right. work in. Oh. Right, right. 
and then we when we have to instruct users to write css and stuff it's just a pain to instruct them to go to the following file write the css and it's still inheriting the css from the system folder instruct them to go there from the plugin folder and then there's another problem so that was the one reason we stopped doing templates on t3 you can see we have one template on 3 uh, gantry 4 was really good we did majority of our templates on gantry 4 then obviously it got outdated our double users wanted php 7 and then you know we migrated all of them to helix now the problem with helix was it had everything we needed but then there were some aspects of it that were missing i'll give you an example i know i, I feel the same way too but i can't really right. enunciate it what do you think right so in Asteroid or in any, I mean, think about the power of Gantry or the power of T3. A T3 has a good, good different f amount of different features, but the power of Gantry and Helix and, and even Asteroid lies really in the layout manager. This is the really complicated piece that takes a lot of time to get it done. Other than that, these are really just basic fields that live in Joomla that can be easily modified. So helix was the perfect one for us we did about five six templates free ones on them and then all the other paid templates we have on helix as well but then came the time where we wanted to do more with helix you know we wanted to modify it we wanted to let's say uh extend it and then you know we realized after a certain point that we are doing uh, right we are doing all of this development but we don't own it we're doing it on someone else's code so why not spend some time and do a framework that we think will be useful for the kind of templates we were we are trying to put out and that's that's why we decided to do asteroid go ahead i'm sorry can you, can you comment more on gantry 5 because I, that's the one i use currently all my major websites use yeah. Gantry 5 and it's very very good in fact very very look, good if, if you look go at ahead. if you look at the cms critic awards for last year rocket theme mm -hmm. the creators of gantry 5 was second place right so can't so the difference between helix or asteroid or t3 and gantry 5 and I, so I'd put Helix, Asteroid, and T3 on one end, and I'd put uh, Gantry 5 and U3 in Pro. Are you familiar with U3 in Pro? No, I never used it before. No, 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 I haven't heard of it. Okay. So I'll put Helix, T3, and Gantry, uh, I'll put Helix, T3, and Asteroid on one end, and I'll put in comparison Gantry 5 on the other end. The reason they're different is T3, Helix, and Asteroid are really template frameworks. They let yeah. you uh move content around but they don't let you publish content okay that's not true for uh gantry gantry is a step ahead it lets you publish content as well so it has that page builder kind of functionality in there which lets you publish content blocks you can do slides you can just do a lot in there so we wanted to stay away from that thing that is one of the reasons we didn't go with gantry 5 because we only wanted to have a template framework nothing else so if you want to have a, a custom html module you got to go to the module manager and do it that way rather than just publishing it from the template screen do you do you think there's a shortcoming that's a shortcoming of gantry 5 or is it just a differentiating point between you and them it, it, it's just a vision i don't think it's a shortcoming i think it's actually a really good feature you know even my few of my clients who are based on uh, uh joomla and have the gantry templates with them rocket team templates gantry 5 they like that feature you know they can do what you do with the whole page builder you can do with the template what you do with the slider you can do in the template there are a lot of good features you know you can do tabs and stuff so there are a lot of good features in there it's just that our vision was strictly to have a template framework rather than building it in combination with kind of a page builder functionality, if you, if you know what I'm saying. I mm, know, oh I know. How, mm -hmm. So how many templates do you have out now for, for Asteroid? Uh, for Asteroid, we have uh, we we have one template. <laughs> That's a good question. 
<laughs> so we have really been spending time on putting out the framework. We have s -Red, we have three templates that we were even, I was even testing a few hours ago. So they'll be coming out within the next few weeks before the end of this month, of course. And then once, you know, we, uh, you know, we get some more feedback uh, within the next few months, obviously before June of four, our priority would be to convert all our existing templates on Asteroid as well, assuming things go well, you know, and the community likes it and uh, the user base likes it to convert all the templates on Asteroid uh, and make sure that everything we deliver is Joomla 4 compatible. So that's that's what we're looking that's at. Top, that's top, the top thing you need to do because it's coming really soon. Right. <laughs> uh, one, last, one, one more question about Joomla as a whole. Is Joomla secure? Is is there is there a security issue? Because I think in the last year, there's been a lot of uh, attacks on Joomla. Websites, but I think the reason for that is actually because, not because there's anything wrong with Joomla, but because of those flaws that they picked up that, were really there for a long time, but at least they picked it up. But because those flaws were published and a lot of people did not update in time, they were exploits. Do you what? What do you think about the security of Joomla? I think that the live update feature in Joomla really makes it easier for anyone to keep the site up to date. Okay, so. If there's a patch, if there was a security bug, it's really easy for the end user to update. As far as security is concerned, you know, I have had sites hacked back in the day, majority of them because of either third party extensions or, or you know, weak passwords and stuff. Uh, in theory, if I have just a Joomla site running with no extension, no third party extensions and, you know, no third party templates on them, I've never had a site hacked, obviously, because I keep it up to date. You know, I, I make sure I have the basic administrator folder, correct, uh, you know, protected, you know, so no one can get in and try, you know, thousands of passwords and stuff like that. And then, you know, you, you use Cloudflare on pretty much every site we built. So that's there. I, I think Joomla is very secure. I, by default, I think, I think, I think it's the, Joomla is... Because I have a, a bot that crawls for WordPress security. It's in eight of them. Right, and right, the right, right. So, but if I can scan for those security flaws with a bot, I'm not the only one who can do this. And I, what I do is that I, I put, put it to them that I can fix their security holes. But if I was a black hat person, I would use the mm -hmm. information to hack. Of course, of course. And that, that stands true for any CMS. That's just not something in, in Joomla. That stands true for WordPress and, and Drupal or Magento or any other open source CMS out there. You know, if there's a flaw, someone will try to get it. And again, you know, uh, it just gets back to the very beginning of our call where we talked that WordPress is more commercially managed. Okay, so there's probably a security team. There's one for Joomla as well. But again, you know, a uh, majority of them are volunteers who are volunteering their free time. So I think if the the, the people at the top uh, try to steer it in a manner, in not in a commercial manner necess necessarily, but in a manner so it is uh, more oriented towards the priority, which is, you know, A, security, B, making sure we market to the right audience. I think all the things that we are talking about, maybe we shouldn't have, uh, should not be talking about these, if those things were better managed at the top, you know? Mm, okay. Let, uh, and, and, and I'd like to add to it, I think, for me and you, it's much easier to talk about these things and, you know, whoever is at the top. And I think they're already doing their best trying to manage it. They probably have, uh, you know, a ton of stuff to take care of and they're already doing their uh, best. It's, it's really easy to bitch about anyone else when we don't know what they're going through or what they're doing. You know, but when you get into their shoes uh, and look at it from their point of view, you, you get a totally different view of how things are, you know, based on how we're looking at them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are we ready to go to the meeting of the call? Yes. Okay, let's go. So, uh, Asteroid, uh, have, have you tried the demo? Uh, I only seen the demo, but I actually haven't actually ch checked the back end. So I don't know how the back end works at all. No problem. So I'll go with all the options one by one. Uh, the way it, I've Asteroid installed already, so it's a template you install using extensions manager. You know, it's just a Joomla extension. And then obviously, you put, uh, this is the quick start that I installed. This is a quick start. Yeah. 
Okay. Okay. W once it's installed, you go to templates, and then obviously all the asteroid frameworks similar to Gantry are marked as asteroid, so it's easier to recognize. And then uh, this is our default template. I'll open that up. Are you moving? Because I'm I'm seeing the I I'm just seeing the same screen. I'm sorry. Is your screen moving? Because I can't see you move your mouse. Ah, uh, hang on. Uh, I am saving my screen. Let me shop, stop sharing, and then share again. Can you see my screen now? Just wait. I'm waiting for the. I can see your screen now. Yes. Okay. I'm moving the mouse as well. Can you see it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I can see it. Okay, perfect. So, so how do you get in here? Uh, this is to begin with, just show me again because I didn't see just now the screen sharing was not working properly. No problem. So you install Extroid using just the regular template manager extension installer. So you get yep. extensions manage install. Once the installation is done, you can go to templates and styles, yep. and there you have all the Extroid templates. Just you know, just like Gantry does that. You know, you, so you know what template are based in Gantry. So we have this one which shows these templates are based on Asteroid. You can click off the, on them and then click Asteroid template options. And there you have the Asteroid control panel where you manage everything and anything which is related to the template. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, we'll start with the basic, the very small things. Uh, and again, this is one of the features that Helix was missing. You know, you couldn't really do a custom preloader. We have, you know, we, we really did like 10, 12 of them. Actually, I don't there's... think there's even a custom preloader in Gantry off the shelf. I have never right. seen one before. Yeah, and, and again, it is really about preference. We found that our users wanted these features, and that's why we built it. You know, so it's not a bad Helix feature. It's are, a bit like lazy load images. Exactly, exactly. And so Helix or Gantry may have a different user base where they don't need this. They don't. Their their users don't demand of this, or they don't have a enough bigger user base who needs this in comparison to the other user. Because obviously, I'm talking about giants here. They have a much bigger user base than we have. But this is one of the features. This is one of many features that we wanted that uh, our our user base badly wanted, and was the reason that we had to build our own framework. You know, and and you know, we'll know as we go. So you can turn select a different preloader. I'll I'll go with this one. You can change the color of the preloader, and then obviously in the back you have the background color. I'll just save this and show you what it looks like. <clears throat> oh, well, it's pretty fast. So um, it's because it's on. <laughs> you're right. It's it's I, I, because, because, I know I know how it looks like. I, I know how it looks like. It, it's pretty clear. Yeah, because I'm it's on. It is on. You know, local host. That is why it is pretty fast. I can put a video here, and it'll start loading a little slowly. So I I can do that if you want. But so there's oh, the there preloader. Is, there's a preloader. Yeah. There it is. Yeah, and and obviously you have different preloaders. One of the good features here is the this color that. So we have the white color, but I can change the opacity to like fifty percent. OK, so yeah. what would happen when I do that is in the back, you'll see the website. So notice you'll see the website in the back, but preloader in the center, which I, I found is a very useful feature. So the user can actually see what is happening in the back, but the That's user cannot like click somewhere. Progressive images for JPEG. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So this is one of the features. And obviously, you can change the size of the preloader. Uh, pre I don't think anyone would want to go more than a Hundred pixels, but I think uh, this is something again very useful to the end user in case someone has you know one of those crazy websites where they want a 500 pixels uh, by 500 pixels preloader. So that is something you can manage as well. Again, it's very fast because it's uh, all local, but you get the idea of the preloader, right? <clears throat> okay. The second feature in here is the back to top, and if I scroll down, you know here's our back That's to top. Back to top Right. Uh, you can select from a different, a few different font or some icons here. And uh, are you using font awesome? Yes. Do you use material icons as well, or just font awesome? Just font awesome for now. Okay. As I know, uh, we have had a few users who asked if we can do like material icons, and we may do that in the future. But that is not high up in the list. I can tell you that. Okay. It's just that uh, I know a Gantry 5 developer, but RCA theme, I think they're Bangladeshi. And they do, mm -hmm. they do have uh, 
material icons to supplement the, the form awesome. And I found it quite good because you got a lot more options, even though there's a lot more options in the form awesome already. Right, right. Well, so uh, the material icons is one, font awesome is one. I can't recall, but there's this font icon pack. There's this developer who's managing this GitHub repository, which is combining all of these icons into one font. So he's providing like I think almost like a thousand or more icons in one font. Yeah. So I was looking at that with my developer the other day, and we were thinking maybe we'll go with that. Again, it's not high up in the list because it's really a small feature. Yeah. Uh, at least for us, it it's not going to take a lot of development time. So it's not high up in the list. But uh, uh, you're the one who asked, and then we had another user, uh, and I think on the forum or on Facebook, who asked the same thing, like, "Hey, can we do material icons?" So we may end up doing that because uh, in the menu you have icons and and then there are a few different places where you have a whole list of icons rather than just these five six top icons so i think in those places those icons would be very useful you know okay yeah. okay yeah. mm -hmm. let's go on so the next is you can select a different i'll go with this you know the cloud upload icon you can change the size this is very useful. I'll explain this in a minute. And then obviously you can change the color. I'll change this to this funny one. You can change the background color. I'll change it to this one. And then you know you have the shape, rounded circle or square. I'll save it as is and I'll refresh, refresh the, page. the page. And then you can see we have this bigger icon. It looks, okay? it looks really, really now, jarring. Uh, looks really weird. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so one of the problems we experience, and I'm, I'm positive a lot of users experience is when you have a back, obviously no one's going to have this big of a back to I top icon. But when you have one, it always overlaps the text on mobile phone. You know, yeah. if I, let's say, go with iPhone, you know, 5 or whatever, and I'll do 100%, you can see it overlaps majority of the paragraph. If I'm trying to read this, it's not that easy. Again, the icon in reality is not going to be that big. But even in those cases, it still overlaps. So we have this very useful feature where you can disable the icon to be displayed on mobile. So yeah, if you yeah. only want it, right. So you'll still have it on desktop, but you will not. So there you go. I disabled it. We don't have it on mobile anymore. But if we come back to desktop view, we have our icon. So I think this is a very useful feature for just for you know when, when you're browsing, when your users are browsing through, yeah. just to make sure the icon doesn't overlap the content. And again, you know, even if you have a smaller icon, you know, 50 pixels or whatever, it still would all overlap much of the content if someone is on iPhone 5 or iPhone 4 or, or any of the screens. This is like the standard icon size. So it still would overlap some of the content. And I think this is one of the important features we needed. Again, something Helix or T3 was missing. And, you know, and among being the reasons we created our own framework, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, this is the back to top section. Next is the layout. This is just a standard layout. If you want to go with a box layout rather than a wider layout, I think you the know, background image is very good. It's, it's, it makes. I don't think Gant, it's, uh, Gantry Five is access, as accessible as this when it comes to background images. So it, uh -huh. it, I think yours is a lot easier to do a background image than it is in Gantry Five. In Gantry Five, they focus more on colors, and they got right. They got a lot of options for colors, but. I don't see an obvious way to get background images in Gantry 5, at least not when I use it. Sure, sure. There comes the friend. And again, you know, see, we, we talk about Gantry. We're talking about Andy Miller. He has been with Joomla since what, you know, Mamboo days. So, you know, I, I you know, back in Joomla 1.5, I, I think if I recall correctly, uh, 1.0 maybe, you know, the real Milky Way, there was this template that was done by Rocket Team. That was the default template in Joomla for a long time, if I, if I recall my memory correctly. So obviously he he whatever he's doing he has a much he has access to much wider audience and much larger feedback than we have so maybe that is what his audience is asking for or that is what his gut feeling is telling him to do but i think uh our in our case we really wanted something sim we wanted to follow the simplicity 
of, of that you see with WordPress themes. You know, that was one of the reasons, you know, uh, the, the, the simplicity in WordPress themes just make it makes it much, much easier for the user to make all these mega changes without moving uh, muscle, without moving a single line of code, you know? Mm. Mm. Yeah. So this is the box layout. And you can see the layout is not boxed. We have the background image in the background. You can do parallax effects, all of the all of the basic background options you get on any any website, you know. Mm. Okay. Mm. Okay. We'll go to the header layout. So uh, before header, I'll just explain the layout manager real quick because this is going to come in. Mm. Uh, so the way all the features the header the social icons the mm. uh, you know the contact information the footer all of this works is you can publish all of these positions uh, all of these uh, features to a module position mm -hmm. and that module position must exist somewhere in the layout manager mm -hmm. are you able to drag the layout left to right by percentage in asteroid no, you are not. So you always got to do with these fixed grids that we are offering. Because that, that is actually one of the things uh, that I found Gantry I Life really good for. Yes. Right, right. You, you can do this. it and then you can equalize as well. Yeah. But you did this because you want simplicity, right? Yes. Again, simplicity. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I guess if I want, I guess if I want my, if I have a client that wants to self manage, after I build it, Astro is going to be a lot easier than Gantry then? Uh, depends depends on the client, sure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you we are in nowhere near what Gantry is, you know, uh, even though we feel like the product is solid enough, but, but Gantry is done after years and years of collective feedback. So we're nowhere near what Gantry is offering. I can tell you that, of course, you know, I, I encourage you to try it and use it on your production sites as well. We are rebuilding our site based on Asteroid. You know, we're just redoing the CSS. So not really new building, but we're, we're, I'm doing a lot of my clients' uh, websites, just redoing them on, on company hours just because we want to test Asteroid. So, you know, we have uh, actively, we have about uh, 25 to 30 sites we're working on just trying to connect them in I'll, I'll and, be building uh, more of yours because uh, I want to try some new stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, please. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. You know, uh, uh, the product is stable. We have tested it a lot. We have tested a lot of websites, but I think there's a long way of, of for for us to make it so uh, you know we 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 put it next to Gantry just because I have a lot of respect for that product. You know. Mm. Mm -hmm. It is the best pro product for a developer, I think. I've never seen any better. I've never seen better. I've always been happy. Actually, uh, I want to see the performance with this type of template framework compared to Gantry because I manage, I, I use a, a, uh, a website grader by HubSpot. Mm -hmm. it's, it does a few criteria, including performance. Gantry 5 actually performs extremely well. Ah, okay. Okay, we'll, we'll run some tests at the end. Very sure. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it runs it runs extremely well. Uh, my all my fastest websites are all Gantry five. If I I have a T three website, but it's too slow. Right, right, right. Yeah, um, I I don't like T like three either. But again, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. From performance, you know, so there are two elements there. Uh, there's the server side elements, which make sure how fast your website renders. You know, which we have got pretty right. And there's a the client side thing on how many elements of JavaScript, CSS, and images we are doing, which we have compressed to something very low. So the, the, we, the, uh, if you yep. Yeah, go on. Yep. If you run some tests on Google page speed or, or, or web page test, I think you'll have pretty high scores. We we are using JCH, so we are compressing the CSS and, and JS, you know, on, on runtime. So that is happening. But even uncompressed uh, are the default one it's it's no so, we don't we don't have that many assets loading. so, so are yeah. you saying that the compression is native to asteroid 
And uh, no, we uh, the ja JavaScript compression. No, we we only have CSS files compressed and you know gzip by default. But JavaScript compression, we're not. We are looking at. It is a feature we will be offering down the list. So uh, compression uh, oh. for all. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I want to know if you if you're saying that the JavaScript is not compressed uh, by Asteroid, have you tested the JCH optimize? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Our demo is our demo is running Asteroid and JCH optimizer. Because JCH optimizer is the biggest one. Is the biggest one. If you are compatible with that, then most of it will be done for you. you don't oh yeah, yeah, so yeah. If you, if you, if you look at this, if you look at this, this is JCH optimized. This is uh, this is JCH optimized, and it's running just fine. You know, even our demo is doing that. So this is running just fine. Okay, that's good. Yeah, yeah. So uh, coming back to this, we don't have native JS compression built in. We're working on that. It's just you know a lot of JavaScript to go through and make sure you know you deliver a product which doesn't conflict, like JCH. You know, and it, it, again, one of the great products which is outside of US, of course. And I have uh, experienced. Like eighty-five percent of the time, uh, times by default, I can take JCH up to the top level, and I don't have any issues. You know, the optimum level, which which whatever it is named, I can take it up there, and I don't have any issues whatsoever with JS conflict or whatever. It's just when there is some custom JavaScript, or when there are so many extensions, K2 is loading its own jQuery, then there's Charm Social, which is doing its own thing. When all of that is happening, that's when we have these problems. But overall, JCH does a really good job, and Asteroid by default Default is fully compatible with it. Mm, that, that's very important because that's the market leader in Joomla. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I know. I know. So uh, back to uh, you know back to the optimization. We will be offering JS optimization by default, and then we're also working on the feature. So when you upload images for your logo here, these images and the background images and any images in Asteroid, they are conver being converted to this WebP format uh, that Chrome is pushing for. You know, mm -hmm. So in comparison to uh, PNG and JPG files, you get almost like 75% of the size, I think. So it saves you 25% of the space, keeping the quality of the image almost the same. So we are pushing for that few, a few versions down the line, uh, just to keep performance in mind. Mm, mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, go on. Okay, so back to our uh, layout manager. Like I said, so you can create pos module positions in layout manager. We'll go over this. Uh, so asteroid header is really this area. So this is what you see. This, uh, not even this. This is the header. Okay, mm -hmm. and the way it works is you select it and you publish it to a module position. So this is published to Asteroid header. If I go to layout, I can see it here. I can see the Asteroid header module position is here. Okay, once it is there, whatever changes I make to this uh, element will be rendered to this position. Now I can move this section up and down. It will be moved up and down accordingly within the page, and that's the flexibility too of it. So you don't have the mega menu or the logo of the page, which is always going to stay at the top of the page. You can move it wherever you like. One of the flexibility that Helix up until recently did not have, even the Helix Ultimate did not have. It always has the header to the very top of the page. You can do much with it, and then uh, you know, when, when you know you can. Disable the header and create your own header. So we are offering one. Uh, this was one of the features we needed, and you know you obviously can do whatever you like. You can move the header up and down. You can move the header at the bottom if you want. So one of the templates we had. Uh, I'll show you a demo. <clears throat> this feature in particular, moving the header up and down, is really useful in this template. So what we have in this template is you have this uh, video at the top, and then you have the menu at the bottom. You know the mega menu at the mm. bottom. So this feature is really useful when you want to have a module at the top, but then you want to have your menu, which is sticky, below that. That's very, very good. Yeah, yeah. So uh, this, uh, so 
well, once we are published, uh, once we are published it to the module or uh, any module position, there are six different header layouts. Visually, you can see what they're giving you. So this is the horizontal mode, which offers you the logo on the left, the menu to the next of it, and an option to publish a block on the right. And I'll explain what these blocks are. The second one offers you a logo on the left, a menu in the center, and block on the right. The third one offers you logo in the left and menu and a block aligned to the right. So what we'll do is we'll go with this one just so you can see the layout is changing here. <clears throat> mm -hmm. When I refresh, you can see the menu, which was here, is now aligned to the right. Now, this place here, we can have a block. So I can say I want to have a custom HTML position here. I can say uh, this is just test on video okay and when I do that you'll see the custom HTML would appear as is here this is one again if you want to have something static now if you want to have something dynamic with a module you can publish a module position here so let's say you can publish um, social so to this position we have these social icons published you'll see when I refresh the social icons would start appearing here Again, yes. this is something with a combination of a few different features. You get this with a combination of a few different feature, uh, uh, few different frameworks that we have tried to build with simplicity in mind, just in one header block. You know, so uh, in in a lot of websites you've seen, even in T3, this was a feature back in the day that you want to have search in the menu bar. But again, you know, sometimes that would make things confusing. When you have search, you can't remove it or you cannot replace it with anything else. We have made it so that it's a module position. You can publish search to it. You can publish your anything login you module to it. Anything you want, exactly. And if it's not static, if it's not, uh, if it's not dynamic, you can just say, OK, you, know, you can type in whatever HTML you like here, and it would appear right here. Mm -hmm. OK, and then moving on. So so this was the horizontal mode. The second one is the stacked mode. OK, and you have seen you must have seen some of the rocket theme templates back in the day or some other templates as well, where you have the logo in the center and menu items to the left and right. Again, this was something uh, either you could uh, back in the day either you could offer this as a feature so you have logo in the center and uh you know menu items to the left and right or you could just offer this one where you have the logo and menu but we're trying to offer all of this without moving a single line of code with just using the same framework and keeping the same styles and everything it's very look this menu option is actually much more flexible than Gantry 5. In Gantry 5, you, there's only one option. I can't, right. uh, you can change the colors, but it's very, very limited, except that you can put things in the header if you want to, like social and stuff. That's easily done. But if you're talking about changing the stack style, however, I don't see this in Gantry 5. It's not easy. Right. Done. Right. And that is what I'm saying. Even back in the day. So there was this template from Rocket Theme. Uh, this, this, layout this was actually expired uh, inspired i in, and this i was actually inspired by one of the rocket theme templates one of the rocket theme joomla 2.5 templates it's more than three years old template where you have the logo in the center i was inspired by that and while we were doing the header i had this in the back of my head that however we do it we want to make sure that there's an option where we can offer the user to have the logo in the center menu items to the left and right you know and with the stack mode you can do that so with the first option you can have the logo at the top the menu below that and you can have a block at the bottom the block can be social icons your phone number anything okay the second one you have seen and then the third one you have an option to do two blocks so you have the logo and the menu on the left on top of each other and on the right you can have up to two blocks where you either display your social icons your contact information anything static or module positions very flexible yeah so uh, moving on, you can select what menu you want here. Now, I'm not sure uh, if you have, but I've experienced this, that the mega menu of my website I'm building 
is not as same or is not representative of the mobile menu as well. So I may not want to have all of these options on mobile. Yeah. Again, something of, of a feature that was missing in other frameworks we're working on. So in Asteroid, you can have a mega menu, but for mobile, you can select a totally different menu. So let's say I'll go with quick links as my mobile menu and main menu as my mega menu. So on desktop, you can see I have the regular menu, but as soon as I go on mobile, I don't have that menu. I have a much simpler menu, which is accessible and makes sense on mobile. The one you just, you're, you're seeing now is the only one that's available in, in Gantry 5. I've never seen any other type uh, because all of them use the same, the same thing. Right, all of them just, just just follow the sheep. Yeah, all of them do the same thing that they just assume that the menu of your website is also the menu of your mobile. I mean, but practically thinking, like I said, uh, when I'm building for clients, they always want a different menu for mobile because they want a simpler menu. They, they, they sometimes do not want the quote button or they want the quote button not part of the menu, but as a button. So there, there are a lot of changes and I've had personally had this requirement from my clients a lot of time so this was a feature i personally wanted and we bet I, I i'm not familiar if, if it exists in gentry if you say so uh, it does the, exist the, is it, the quick links where you click the the three bars and it opens on the side that mm -hmm. that is the only one in gentry five there's no other thing ah. okay okay got it got but it, got it. Ask you, yeah. if you are yeah. mobile are you able to flip to the left and it comes out uh, you mean, am I able to? Yeah. Oh, if I do this, no, yeah, it doesn't it, come out. You actually have to click it. So it doesn't come out if you try to swipe it. Uh, you actually have to click here. That's how uh, it works. But, but that's, is, it, is this that's fixed? It. Is, it like, is it fixed throughout the entire mobile 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 experience? Because the thing is that if you if you have it fixed, it's fine. But if you're not having mm -hmm. it fixed, it may be useful to include an option to swipe left, and then it comes out. Because then you can always easily access the menu without going up to the top, and then that that is very useful feedback. Let me write it down. Sure. Yeah. 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 That's that's a that's very Gantry good feature. 5. We didn't that's, talk of it. That is that is Gantry Five feature that's in all the menus. All the menus are the same. I've never seen the menu look any different. Ah, got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Yeah. And that's that's very useful. Sure. That uh, I think that'd be very useful just to be able to pull it from the left anywhere on the screen. Obviously, you can click it if you like, but to be able to pull it anywhere from the screen, I think that'd be very useful to the end user. Either that sure. or you just have a fixed header and then in mobile, it just scrolls. Right, 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 right. Yeah, sure. I hear you. Sure. Okay. Yeah. All right. Back to the drop down. So you can have different menu. And then you can select from a few different animations. These are just, you know, animate.css default animations. Uh, we'll just go with bounce and left just to give you a demo. <clears throat> so right now you can see the drop downs just come down by default. This is a default animation. And when I select that animation, oh. uh, you know, the items come from the life. There are like six different animations that work in fine on uh, mobile, uh, on drop downs that look good. And those are the ones we have included. So now they're coming from the right. You can see, and you know, just just simple stuff. You know, nothing complicated. Mm. Okay. Next is as part of the header. Next we have the logo. So the header has three areas: the menu, the logo, and the off canvas. And we're going through all of them. So in the next is the logo. You can have a text logo, where you just type in a text or in a tagline. If you don't want the tagline, you can just empty it. It won't appear. And this displays a very basic text logo. So Asteroid, your Joomla site title, no styling, nothing major, you know, just, just simple stuff. Mm -hmm. We don't expect someone to uh, be using this, but it's still a feature in case you don't have time to do a logo. You're trying to do a site real quick. You're trying to do a demo or whatever. You just want some text uh, up there. How do you, how do you change the, the font for the text? Uh, right now, it's, it's, uh, it's using the default body font. So either you'll have to write some CSS or we are thinking to include the options for font here in colors or just below here. So you have an option to change the color, the font size of the logo. So you'll probably the, see that. Changing, in. changing the font is going to be very useful because it's not that useful right now if you just have right. a default. 
right right so you'll you'll have those options uh probably next one of one or two versions right here where you can change the color where you can change the size you know may change the font family as well for the logo mm. but back to the image logo so again you have a default logo and yeah you have a mobile logo sometimes you know we want to have a smaller logo just this asteroid icon on mobile you can do that you can select a different logo for mobile and it will appear on mobile okay mm, okay the next feature <clears throat> which uh, i think is very very important so you know you always get sticky header which is fine but uh, i i've experienced this myself that you know uh, on, on sometimes it's kind of a pain so you're trying to scroll back up and then sticky header is taking some of the page which you can see in this case as well so the way we have uh, build the sticky header and even it's in, useful on mobile as well first of all you can have a different logo for sticky header if you want to that's one thing secondly you can uh, what you can do here is you can select if you want the header to be always sticky or sticky on scroll up now this is useful specifically on mobile devices I'll give you an example so let's say we have the sticky header and let me save it, refresh the page, <clears throat> and inspect, and we go into mobile view. And then what happens is if you have the sticky header uh, on mobile view, you'll see it takes up like 10% of the space at all times. Okay, so 10% of my view is always blocked. What you can do is you can do sticky on scroll up on mobile what would happen is the header would only appear when the user is trying to scroll back. So the header doesn't appear. As I'm trying to go down, the header doesn't appear. The second I'm trying that's, to go back, the very, header very appears. Useful. Look, uh, the menus in Rocket Team on Gentry 5 are not as flexible as this. Right, right, the only, right. The, right. Only thing that that this was, the only thing that they've done that you haven't done is the this, short this left. Ah. Uh, Got it. Okay. Okay. I'll, I, I've not used Gantry 5 recently. Again, I'm a big fan of Rocket Team, always been. They do great work, you know, but I have not been familiar with uh, their most recent versions, at least not in, on, 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 in detail within past few months. So bear my ignorance on there, but I may not know about a few of the features you're ta talking about. I'll go through it. I think there's a lot to learn from that program as well. Again, you know, I'm a fan and you seem to be using it a lot. So I think there's a lot to learn from that program as well. But uh, for, for the moment, uh, you can see, you know, this, this is something very useful. So you have the sticky and then you can do it for tablets as well. So on tablet devices, if you want the header not to be sticky or you want it to be sticky always or you want it to be sticky on scroll up when the user is trying to come back up, you know? Mm -hmm. The next feature is the off canvas. Now, on mobile, you might get confusing. I mean, a user might get confusing. Why do I have too many options here? You know, what, what does this do and what does this do? So this, this might be confusing for the user. So the second one is off canvas. First of all, you can say, I don't want off canvas or I don't want, I just don't want it. You can disable it and you'll see the off canvas icon will go away. It won't appear. <clears throat> And then there you go. It's gone from mobile. It's gone from desktop. It's gone for good. If you do, however, enable it, then you have a few different options. So you can say what devices you need it on. Either you only need it on small devices, you need it on medium devices, large, tablet, or, or you know extra large. So let's say always. The second one, you can des uh, decide the width of this. So you can say you want the off canvas to be 500 pixels wide. You know, based on what content you're publishing in, this is really flexible. So this is 500. Let's say I want to change it to 800. Uh -huh. You know, if I'm putting a whole video in there or whatever, you can do that pretty easily. Again, without a single line of code. Uh, just wondering. Uh, I just let you know another yeah, feature of Feature Gantry Five. Uh, one thing, one thing Please. with Gantry Five is that in their menu, you are able to put. I, I, if I'm correct. You can even put whole modules in the menu. What I did was I, I, I copied the social module. And so uh -huh. when, you, when, you, when you swap in the mobile, when you swap left and you see the menu options, you got all your social icons on the, on the bottom. Ah, okay, okay. 
Yeah, we you can do uh, again. It, it's a great feature. You can do it in Asteroid as well. I'll show you here when we go about making a mega menu. Okay. Mm. Okay. So back to off canvas, you can manage the width. Then again, this area, this is just uh, this is just a module position off canvas. So let's say I have my social icons. Instead of them appearing on the asteroid so top social, I want them appearing on the off canvas. I can change it, and you can see my social icons here. Here, mm. okay. Let's say I want my um, custom uh, contact information to also appear in off canvas. We can change it, and you'll see the this one is also appearing in here. Off canvas. Right, off canvas. And this is, again, this is just a module position. It's a plain module position. You can publish a video. You can publish a menu. You can publish whatever you need in here. Really flexible. That's, that's the idea. Do not limit the user to just have a menu in off canvas or just have uh, you know, menu and social icons and search in off canvas. We wanted to give the user uh, the flexibility to do whatever we want. So wherever we had options, we just made it a module position and let the user do its thing, you know? Mm -hmm. OK? Mm -hmm. And with off canvas, obviously, you have a few different animations. We're using push right now. Uh, I just slide this. You can do slide on top or reveal. These are, you know, just just some fancy animations. Uh, looks really good from a user standpoint. And you can see this comes on top. And the third one is reveal, which is a different kind of animation. So personal preference there. Whatever users like, they can use that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's off canvas. Let's go to the menu manager and build, you know, just look at the menu structure if we can to see what is going on there. So here's a menu structure. So we have this, this, and this, and this, and this. So these are all just uh, men menus. Let's go into home since it has two columns and see what that looks like. So if I go into home, you can see we have asteroid mega menu here. And then we have two columns here. OK? Mm. These columns, uh, what, what you can do, this is just another layout manager here. So you can do whatever kind of layout you need. And in the layout, you can either add modules or you can add submenus. Simple as that. You can keep building it how much to whatever length you want to extend it, how many ever menu items or modules you want to add in there, and it'll work just fine. I've never seen a menu, a menu uh, maker that's this flexible in, my, in, in the whole time in developing Joomla. Right. So again, that's what we're trying to do. We're just trying to make it as flexible. So again, this is just a layout manager. You know, if you try to compare this with this, you'll see we have the same icon here, you know, and then the same plus icon here. So we're just trying to give the user uh, another layout manager where the user can put whatever he likes. So there are no limitations on what the user can or cannot do. And, you know, if you publish these and refresh, you can see, OK, you know, you have the Google Map. And you know, Google Map's not loading because we're in localhost. But you have this, this thing here. You know, obviously, it's in white color. That's why you can't see it. But again, this is letting you do whatever, whatever you, want, you want, giving you a, yeah, giving you a module position at every place. Yes. Wow. Yeah. So this, Another, this, this is not ahead. just some, some new, new thing that's come up. You really, you really put a lot of thought into this. Oh, yeah, 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 a lot. So again, uh, Clarence, I've been working on Joomla since 2009, you know? Mm -hmm. And not, I couldn't say from day one I wanted to develop a framework, but I knew all of these frameworks and Joomla and extensions, like, like you know, the, the, like the back of my head, if I may. So I, I had all of this in the back of my head and my subconscious for all these years. And when the time came, you know, all of that knowledge and information and experience of the team came together. It was a joint effort, of course. I couldn't take credit for all of that. I I, I, I couldn't do any of this all by myself, you know, hell alone the idea. But it was a joint effort by the whole team who, 
each one of us have, you know, years and years of experience just working in Joomla, just working on T3, just working on Gantry, you know, all these frameworks and seeing what the limitations are. Because there are hundreds of case studies where we're trying to do exactly these things and we're doing a module or a plugin just for one client. You know, we're doing it just for one client just because the client is asking for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So this is the mega menu and obviously you explore more and you'll know more. If you do not want the mega menu, you can just turn it off and you'll have, you know, just the <clears throat> regular one column drop downs if you have any. And there you go. So regular one column and then, you know, whatever sub menu items that this goes back down 20 levels, 30 levels. We have tested this. If you do turn it on or don't turn it on, it doesn't matter. And then you can select the drop down alignment width. Give it a custom class if you want to write some CSS. Now, this is the part where you have all the CS, uh, font awesome uh, icons. If you want to add an icon next to your, uh, let's say, next to your menu item, or just have an icon and not have that icon te uh, text of the menu item. So you can see I have the WhatsApp icon here. And I can say icon only. And what would happen is the home text, this would disappear. So I only have the icon. Again, this is uh, not useful for every site, but it is something that may be useful for some sites, you know? Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. And another feature that we have here, uh, I'll explain, is the asteroid banner, okay? Uh, you, may, you may have already used it, but let me just make sure the banner is published, yeah. Okay, so the banner, the way uh, the banner works is it lets you create kind of a header, you know, the kind of header we see on a lot of sites these days. It lets you create that header kind of thing on each page. Uh, we'll, we'll just say asteroid is here. And then we'll select the background image as well. Uh, go with, let's say, this one. Yeah, it's going to be much bigger, but we'll go with this. And this is a feature that I've been missing in Joomla for a long time, or any of this extension. Let me move it up. OK, I can show you what it looks like. Uh, let me move it up above the hero uh, section if I can. Yeah, OK. So imagine being able to change the image and text and uh, you know this tagline of the page based on every menu item. Now, I've built a lot of sites recent. Now, this is something that has come up recently within the past two, three years, where on every page they needed it. They needed a background image, which was which would go edge to edge, left to right, and then they needed a title, and then they needed a tagline just for that page. And we'd always put a custom module for them. They'd go in and either break the background image of the custom module or something like that. Now, you can do all of this on a menu item level. And if there is a page you, you don't need it on, you can just turn it on, off. Mm. So yeah. you're saying personally, yeah. Go ahead. You're saying that this banner is going to be in every page you allow it on, but you can control yes. what what page it goes on. Exactly. So you can, on a menu item level, you can say you want to turn on the banner. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can say the title, the subtitle, if you want to have a background color, if you want to have a background image, whether you want the title to be H1 or just a regular paragraph. Okay. And then you can add custom classes and all this customization. But basically, what you get is to be able to have a banner at the top of the page, which, which I think is very useful. I, I found uh, this phase, uh, feature personally. We added it like after uh, the in the version 1.1.1, I think, you know, so after so like this, this, banner, <clears throat> this banner appears everywhere you want it to be here. Well, this so this is controlled by so the banner would appear here so I can move it down I'll just show you I'll move it down below the hero section so the banner doesn't appear here but it appears here instead that that is a very very useful feature yeah yeah that's what I'm saying guess, you know this is some this is a, and make a different one if you have to although I don't think anyone want to well, what do you mean? 
basically, can they duplicate that banner and have two banners? I don't think it's necessary, but I'm just wondering. Can you? No. So the banner is limited to one banner. But but how would you control two banners? How would you control that, that two is, banners? That, that's just the thing. I, I'm just. I don't think there's a <laughs> use for it. I can think of now, but I'm just wondering how much <laughs> flexibility you actually have. You, so when you add an element, what happens is so when you're adding elements in beginning, you have four types of elements. You can do a module position. You can do a banner. You can do a component, and you can do messages. Mm -hmm. Once you have added a component, it disappears. Once you have added messages, it, they disappear. Once you have added banner, they disappear. So the very only thing left at the end is the module position. Ah, uh, so you can only have one banner. banner. Yes. Okay, that's you fine. I, I, I don't think one message. I don't think you need right. to call it one banner, but I'm just curious because you are making this very flexible, even though it's right. <sighs> Right, but but the theory, if we can offer two banners, what well, the problem would be how would the user control it? You know, yeah. then we'd need yeah. to have like, you know, two banner tab zero or something like that. That that I think just gets a lot confusing for the user. Yeah. But this That's is fine. one of the features I think is very useful for the end user considering the way the designing is happening these days because everyone's doing this. You know, you go on all these popular websites, you see this at the top of pretty much every page. And I think this is this is very useful. So um, back to the header. So we color, uh, covered the header, the mega menu, you know, which you said you like very much, flexible enough. Thanks, uh, thanks on that. Uh, the next section is the colors. So you can manage all the colors, the background white, which is you know the co link colors, the menu colors, the just the plain black color, everything from the back end, everything from here. So you, you manage the body colors, you manage the header colors. You manage the main menu, you manage the drop down menu colors, you manage the off canvas colors, that's, and then you manage the footer colors. That's actually the the strength of uh, Gantry 5. The color, right. the color scheme is just. Right. And then obviously, this is RGBA, so you don't, you're not limited to just uh, blue. You can have an opacity inside blue as well. So you can have it half blue, you know, not like full blue. You know, so that's that's something that pretty much every color picker out there was missing that we added. So this is not 100% blue. This is like 50% blue. So if there's a background image behind it, you you will be able to see it like 50%. I'm getting, I'm really really impressed. This this is a really good product. I I think this is one of my favorites. Thank you. Sure. <laughs> Uh, that's what I think, you see uh, the uh, but we wait until I use it. <laughs> for real. Right, exactly, exactly. We're waiting, just like we are. So we're waiting for the user feedback. They get to decide either this lives or this dies. You know, they they get to decide it all. But really, and and you know, you have all the colors. You can change the link active color and link hover color for the menus. You know, all the basic colors that the user would want to change. We have all the settings here. So the link active is changed. The link hover is changed. You can even manage the drop down. So they're not linked to the main menu. So the drop downs don't have to be as same as the main menu color. The, the hover for drop down can be <clears throat> the, where's the hover link color? Here you go. The hover for drop down can be red, wherever, whereas the hover for main menu is the green. You know, So you can see wow. real flexibility there. Wow. I don't think you can do that gantry. It's just one color, one color set. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I again not familiar with Gantry, but uh, yeah. So the the real flexibility there. You know, you hover hover background, active background. A, a lot you can do here. Okay. Mm. And you know, all the colors work. So we we'll go to the layout manager. <clears throat> uh, layout manager. The the easiest way to explain this is to clean up and do a fresh layout. Let's do that. I think because there are a lot of blocks here. They just make all the things. blocks. I'm I'm deleting everything, so we'll just create a fresh layout. We'll try to rebuild this. I don't remember all the positions, so I don't think I'll be re able to rebuild it. But we'll just try to rebuild as much as we can. Okay. Okay. Are, are you the lead developer? No, I'm not the lead developer. Uh, lead developer is Hitesh. That's an Indian name, and the designer, lead designer, is Chandan. So I want to make sure. 
we we keep those guys in mind while we're looking at this because those are the idea those are the minds behind the whole idea i'm not the lead developer mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay so we'll start with you got to have a minimum of one section you can see when you have a minimum of one section you do not have uh, an option to delete this section so you cannot do that so the first thing you do is add a section in the section you select how many columns you need so let's try to do a six by six layout in here now you have all these four options the, that the one I was talking about just because we cleaned up the layout we have all these options I can add a banner I can have a component I can have a message or I can have a module position though the minute I select the banner you can see the banner is gone from selection the minute I select the component you can see the component is gone from selection. The minute I select messages, you'll see messages are gone from selection. Now, this is something you'll see, uh, if I, I recall correctly, this is something that exists in Gantry as well. Yep. Uh, but you can publish component as many times as you like, right? Yep. Yep. That's yeah. Correct. Yeah. So that, that was something I found like we had to correct on a user send. You know, even though the component will render just fine if you publish it like a module 10 times, I just felt like on a user's end, we had to do it. We had to take responsibility for the user and limit it so the user does not make the stupid mistake of rendering the component and the messages so many times, you know? Ah. Uh. Yeah. So we'll go with the module position here. Let's say position one, any position. And really, this oh, is it. Yep. Why go does ahead. it say position one? So position one is just a module position. This is a module position. So you can go to module manager. We'll, we'll go to the module manager and, and publish a, a module to this position just to demo this. But, oh, so the model, module position is just the name, but the actual position is exactly. different. The actual position, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can change the title. So you can say position, position one while on call, and this will be the title here. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, the, but the actual module position is position one. This is the element title that is displayed on the back, and you can change it if you like, but it'll stay default module position. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's save it. Refresh. Our layout is nearly gone. You can see we only have this. So let's try publishing uh, something to position one, if I can. <clears throat> Custom HTML. Okay. And it's a uh, position one and save. And you can see this module appears here. So, and that's that's pretty much it. That's the power of Asteroid. It lets you create position, and you can publish anything, any module to those positions. And that's pretty much it. You have your layout. You can do whatever you like with it. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And there you go. I'll just change the colors back to something normal. So this is readable and stuff, you know. Yeah, there you go. So. That's that's it. So now that uh, back to the layout manager, you can see we have the you know all all the elements in here. Okay. Now at each element, you can do uh, you can select a different animation. So these are all the uh, animate.css animations. Uh, we'll select bounce and left on this one, and well, we have to do it on this one because this is the only one with the content in it. So we'll select bounce and left on this one. Let's add another section where we'll have another position. Let's say position two. And here we'll select the animation bounce and right. All right, let's save it. So you see the animations? Yeah, I do see it left and right. Yeah, right, right. And again, the animations can be so if you have two columns let's say if i have like three different columns here and i have a position one and position i'll just select bottom one here okay and for bottom one i'll select the animation uh bounce out up uh, not a bounce in up i want to do bounce 
in bounds in okay and then I here I'll select bottom two okay and for this one I'll select the position bounds in left we already have this so bounce out up and this one fade and right yeah okay let's do that okay and then for this one for the first one we already have it so you can see if you have six columns or whatever you can have animations for pretty much every area which which that, again is a flexibility that yeah. is yeah not something you find in gantry yeah i had the same reaction when my developer demoed it to me <laughs> Uh, you can't have this by default in Gantry. You have to code it. But I think you need That's JavaScript. That's what I'm saying. You? I'm sorry? You need JavaScript to do that, don't you? The the animations like that? I, I think so. I think so. So this is all built. Are you familiar with Animate CSS? Not really. Okay. Uh, Animate.css is a really popular animation library, which offers all these animations. So, you know, you have all these animations where you're trying to do all of this. This is really popular, just like Bootstrap, but, you know, Bootstrap has a much bigger user base because it's, you know, it has a different use case, but this is very popular. So we're using the same script, this script, to do all these animations. So you have all these animations available. You know, you have all these animations available and, and, you know, you can do it on a module level. So when your page is coming up, either you have the elements coming in from left or right or top or bottom or fading or whatever you need. Wow. Really? Wow. I mean, Gantry is good, but this is, this is even though you're saying that it's not as powerful as Gantry, it's, it's pretty good. I'm, I'm saying out of respect that uh, this uh, doesn't stand a chance against Gantry, just because I, I have a lot of respect for Gantry. I've, I've used that framework back in, you know, 2011. I was using Rocket Team templates to build websites, you know, when I was a naive developer myself, you know, just starting up shop here. So, uh, but, but yeah, again, we are, we're just trying to do something that has not been done before. So that's, that's the idea here. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. So on layout manager, you know, you in you know you have this general tab that lets you select the position of the element in the design. You can add a custom background color, or you can do custom background image on a or a background video on the element level. Okay, and you can decide if you want to hide a particular element. Uh, on a particular, a particular module position on a particular device, exactly. So this this is again something that is available on every level, on every every element level, and really. So you can see this one is now red background because we made it red, and then you can add custom classes to it to make add more colors to it, change the text color and whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. We'll go to typography. And uh, there's an update coming in the next day or two, but I'll explain that. So this is basic typography where you're able to change. These are all Google fonts, okay? Mm -hmm. And then you know you have the system fonts at the top, and then you have all the Google fonts, all thousands of them, whatever. Uh, you select whatever font you like. The good thing is you get to experience the font right oh, as you're trying you to launch it. Exactly. So let's say I select this font. It'll take a second to load, and you'll see the preview here, right? That is right, very, the same very time. It's a, it's a time saver. Yeah, yeah. This is time saver. So you get to see what your font is going to look like. Actually, this as you is, select, it goes beyond that. You got letter spacing, right? So that means you can right. Exactly, and that's instant. As you're changing the letter spacing, or as you're changing the line height, or as you're changing the font size, you know, you instantly get to see what it is going to look like on the front end. Ah, this yeah. is this is very very powerful. It's fast. This is this is very useful. Yes, yes, we'll try to do it that way. Yes, and this is the body type. Of, so the, an update that is coming the next version. One of the users requested it on our forum is right now. You can only do font in EM. You know, and one of the yeah. users came back. Hey, I'm trying. I have a Photoshop file. I'm trying to convert it into an Astro template, but all my font sizes are in pixels. I do not know what they are going to be in EM. Can't we have pixel as an option? So in the next version, you have a selector here where you have EM, you have pixel, you have percent, where you have REM, and then you have PT. Mm -hmm. 
So you have all those options here. You can select what you like for letter spading font size and line height, and then you know you do it. So let's say we selected this font, okay? Let's say we select this fancy looking font for body and we saved it and we refresh. And you can see this is a fancy looking font, you know, looks looks really good. We just gotta make some adjustments to make sure we don't have this big of a size, but a uh, really fancy looking font, yeah. Very good. Very, yeah. very good. Sure, thank you. So going back to this, I'll just change this to Arial, so, you know, looks normal. And uh, the, so the, then you have the menu typography where you can say, so in all these typographies, you can say inherit and I'll inherit everything from body, okay? And I'll inherit all the settings for body. For anyone you wanna have custom uh, typography on menu That's level custom. or sub menu level, yeah, custom. So you say custom, you select the font, you select the font size, letter spacing, line height, and it'll do the thing for you. It'll, it'll just apply those settings for that particular area. So you can do H1 to H6, sub menus, menus, and the whole body in general. Mm. Okay? Okay. All right, we'll go to the next section, which is the footer. The footer isn't really anything major. Uh, it just lets you display the copyright. The, the real good thing about footer is this one. I'll explain this here in a minute, the way it works. Uh, so we are back to this weird font now. Uh, so you can see, again, footer is a feature which oh, is published to Estrid. Those are short codes. Yeah, those are short codes. I'm going to demo those to you. Yeah, yeah. So you can see the footer is published to Estrid footer. If I go yeah. to layout and I do a 12 column and I add a module position and I select the position Estroid footer here, OK? Mm -hmm and I save it, so you'll see what happens is, uh, I'll have to add it, you can see, so ear would automatically show me the year, site name would automatically show me the site name. So you can see it says copyright 2018, Asteroid 1.1.2 testing powered by Asteroid framework. Now you can, this is HTML, you can change this to whatever you like. You can where change do you get the this to. But where do you get the yeah, go ahead. Uh, directory for short codes? How do you know which short code to use? These are only two short codes that are applicable. They are listed in our documentation. So we are like expecting the user will either keep this or go through our documentation. I know we should have a tooltip somewhere here that displays you can use ear and site name, but those are only two short codes where we have at the moment. Okay. Those are the two only two that I think make sense here, you know, mm -hmm. because they, they, you know when I'm you know display a menu or whatever, you can do it all of that, you know, with a module manager. So uh, this is the footer, and you know the shortcuts. If you don't want it, you can just disable it really easily. Okay, that's there. Then you have the custom script section. This lets you uh, add tracking codes. Uh, this goes in the head. This goes right before the closing of head. This goes right before body. This go. This is the styles, and these are custom JS. Anything you know you want to include on your page. Okay. Just wondering. Uh I'm drawing from Gantry again, but Gantry uses SCSS. Uh, uh, this uses SCSS as well, but uh, for rendering, this uses SCSS on the back end. But this is all uh, just for front end, for quick, dirty. You know, uh, the, the base is all based on SCSS. If I show you, uh, not this one, this is a rendered file. So this is all, we, we also use all SCSS. This is because pure the way, SCSS. The way you would do it in a Rocket Theme is you need to go to the proper custom SCSS file, then compile it. Right. Well, I mean, you can do that too. So you have the custom file here. You can have the custom SCSS file, or you can have the custom CSS file. But if you want to make it simpler for the user, the user doesn't want to go into the files. I think I, I wouldn't want to go into the files if I want to like one write one line of code. I'd rather do it in the back end. Yeah, you're right. You're right. But yeah. the, only she, reason, the only reason why I do, I do that is just for control. Of course, of course, and again, it's goes to it just goes to personal preference. You know, uh, if you can do a custom CSS, you can do a custom SCSS in Asteroid. But if you want to write like a single line of custom code real quick, you don't want to log into FTP. You rather do it here. 
Uh, one thing I need to note about your quotes, in Gantry there is actually a dedicated uh, element that can, can can integrate Google Analytics just by the user ID. No, no, the, yeah. the property ID, sorry, property ID. Right, right, right. We wanted to do that, but I just saw like that limits the user because when you're getting your analytics ID, uh, it shows you the full code too. And majority of the times you get that full code. So we didn't want it to limit the user to just uh, use Google Analytics, even though that is something everyone uses. We wanted to say, paste your tracking code in here, whether that be analytics, whether that be Google Tag, because everyone's migrating to Google Tag Manager these days, okay? Mm -hmm. And then they wanna have their conversion code, and then they wanna have their Facebook code as well. Then they have Actually, all these other, uh, the only ahead. one, the only one in Gantry available is Google Analytics, and even if you don't put it in, you can put the tracking code beforehand. Yeah, 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 yeah. Again, we talked about doing the analytics one, but then we wanted to leave it open for the user. So this is tracking code. You can add whatever JavaScript uh, analytics code you have from your provider, whether that be Facebook, Google AdWords, uh, you know, or Google Analytics or Google Tag Manager or any other provider, it'll go all go into the head. And then, you know, you have your JavaScript before body and then CSS and JS, okay? Mm. What's the social thing on the left? Yeah, where that's the tab we're going into. So uh, let's look at our social icons. Let's let's go ahead and add the social back uh, in the layout manager at the very top. Well, yeah, well, we already have the social. Let's just go ahead and publish these social icons to this position. So this is a feature, and like I've explained before, Clarence, you got to publish features to any module position, just like we do footer, just like we did header. Uh, you got to publish social to the social position as well, okay? So I'll show you the icons we have. So you, you can see at the moment we have Facebook, Twitter, GitHub, and LinkedIn, four icons. And you can see we have Facebook, Twitter, GitHub, LinkedIn, all right? Mm. So first of all, if you want to reorder, you just grab one and move it up or down. Simple as that. Mm -hmm. For Facebook, you have two icons. These are the icons that are available in uh, Fontasa. Okay, mm -hmm. so we're using following that. For GitHub, you have two icons. For Twitter, you have two. For LinkedIn, you have two. You can select these. Mm. Mm, I just save this. You'll see the icons have changed now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Up until this point, the icons are following the black color, which is the link color in Asteroid. Mm -hmm. Now, let's say you want to have the brand color, which is blue for Facebook, this other blue for Twitter, blue for LinkedIn, and black for GitHub. Okay. And then red for YouTube. Okay. Mm. And let me add a link here, or you know, this blue for Behance, or this red uh, blue for Flickr, or green for Spotify. Okay, mm. let's say we want to have those colors. So, what there's a setting that instead of inherit color, you change it to brand color. Okay, and then you have all these brand colors. So, yeah. you're not limiting the user to either use the brand colors or use the black color, you're giving the user the access oh, to control. Use and exactly color control up to the icon level not on the whole all the social icons but up to the icon level so they can control the colors of each individual icon and youtube has two icons so you can select from two let's say you have two youtube uh, you know you have two youtube channels you want to have both of them side by side you can have two youtube icons okay so this is the social brands you can click any you can add the icons now, Google Plus has four icons, so you can select the, which one you need, and it'll add the icon right for you, okay? You manage how you want it to appear. And again, you know, you can have two icons for YouTube. It won't matter. It won't warn you, because there may be a use case where the user actually wants to have two icons. Yeah, you're right. Yep, yep, yep. And then, you know, uh, then we had the request from a user who wanted to have a custom icon. He's he, he requested like what, you know, we have WhatsApp, but he requested like something else. So we are adding at the bottom where you'll add uh, an, an icon and then you type in the font awesome code and the link and you'll see the icon would appear here as well and here as well. So it is coming up in the next version. You know, I think we're releasing Monday or Tuesday, but that's coming up as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. Must have missed. All right. 
Yeah, yeah. Miscellaneous, that's the last section. So I'm almost done. Uh, the miscellaneous one uh, is also a feature, so you can turn it off. Uh, contact details. Uh, and miscellaneous is actually four sections. Contact details coming soon, 404, and a fav icon. So you can turn it on or off. And if you do turn it off, you select what where you want your contact position, uh, contact details to appear. In this case, I'll select Astro Top Contact, which is published to the left of it. So you can see the address, the phone number, and email. Mm. We can change the address to whatever we are like. You, are you we able can... to hyperlink the phone number? Uh, the phone number is hyperlinked by default. Oh, oh okay, 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 okay. The address is the only thing that is not hyperlinked just because we didn't want it to limit it to Google so Maps or you, something. So the mail to is also hyperlinked? The mail to is also hyperlinked as well, yes. All right, that's good. Yeah, so the mail to is hyperlinked, the mobile is hyperlinked, the phone email, uh, the phone number, all three are hyperlinked by default. And then you can uh, put timings as well. Another feature that is very useful, right now you see this location icon, you see the phone icon, you see the email icon, but you do have an option to display text instead. So you select text <clears throat> and refresh, and you can see it says address, phone, and email. These are language tags if you want to change that. But again, this is something you know really simple and lets the user have the flexibility. Again, this is something we were doing in all of our templates. In some, we were using text. In some, we were using icons. So we thought, like, why not build it as a feature? You know. Uh. The next is a coming soon mode. Uh, let's say you want to turn off your website and you want to turn it back on. You know, I don't know, maybe um, a year later or whatever. Mm -hmm. So you can have a coming soon mode. You can put a logo on. Uh. This is just a coming soon demo. I put that up. And you can see, you can manage the layout of this page. You can put a logo if you like. You can put a background image, all the same background settings that we've seen before, OK? Mm -hmm. And then the second last is the 404 page. Let's say we're trying to access uh, you know, option equals, well, let's try to access PMP equals six or no exists. So this would be the 404 page. You can. Uh, yeah, you don't see uh, it here. I don't know why it's not working. But the actual 404 error page, the default one that Joomla has, you have the access to modify the layout just a little bit of that one as well. So this error message, I don't know why it's not appearing on my local. Maybe there's an mm -hmm. integration problem or whatever. But you have the access to modify the layout for that one as well. Mm -hmm. The last one is the fav icon. So you can put whatever fav icon you Actually, like. Even even in Gantry, the fav icon is not able to. You have to do it from the back end in your server. You can't actually do it from the back end of Joomla. Well, another another reason to go with Asteroid then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, the fav icon is not limited to ICO. As you know, you can you can have a PNG, you can have a JPEG, whatever. And if you do that, you'll see this guy's image. Do you see it? Yeah, I see it. It starts appearing it. here. Right, right. So it starts appearing here. You can have whatever fav icon you like. You can clear it and inherit, try to inherit the default asteroid or Joomla fav icon. And then there's no icon. You can see there is no icon in place. But if you do add one, you'll see the icon would appear there. Really, really simple. You know, again, simplicity is what we're trying to deliver here. Yeah. The last one, before I let you go, the last option is, let's say we have built all these settings and we want to take it to another site. You can quickly export the JSON, save it wherever you like, OK? Mm -hmm. Or you can quickly import another JSON and put it wherever you like. That's it. So all of this is saved in JSON. And you can import and export it, or, or export it and take it to another so, site, uh, or sorry, I, I, export I, from another I'm site. Actually, I'm quite actually Go ahead. Quite an obvious uh, developer, and I'm a new front end developer, front end web designer. Uh, that, that JSON file, that's like a what the, the template settings. Yes. Okay. So if you want to import templates, I think it's just click import. You want to export template settings, just export. So the it, it, it imports and exports to JSON file. And uh, you can just change it with a click of a button of import or export. Right, right. So export would really just export and let ask you where do you want to save it. OK. And if I do open uh, this, give me one second. This is just your template settings, nothing else. This is just the template settings column of you know our uh, 
templates table just in JSON. That's it. And then you can go to your other restaurant install where you want to import it, click import, take the file, it'll import right in for you. All the layout manager positions, everything, or everything that, in all these that, tabs. That is actually very, very, very useful. I, I, I have not explored this, but I don't think it's available in Gantry. And there's so much to change in Gantry. If you make a mistake, Exactly, exactly. So this is this works kind of like a backup manager. You know, you keep exporting after you do any major change. It's only like, you know, a few it's KB or faster, whatever, Jason. It's much, it's much faster than using a keyboard backup to just restore the site. Yo, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, see, we're trying to uh, restore, a, a, not even a whole table. We're trying to restore a column of a table here. You know, column of a particular row of a table. Akiba would give us all the tables and all the files. We'd have to extract it, install the it on a staging server, and then take that column and put it on live. This obviously is uh, way faster if you just want to back up the settings of your template. That is very very useful. Uh, I, yeah, think should, yeah, I think you should. Yeah. I think you should submit your your template for the CMS Critic Awards and see what you get. <laughs> I think we're a long way for it. I think we'll have to put a lot of hard work, a lot of research and a lot of research and development into this before this is any and this is anywhere near getting an award. But I, I think we have gotten to a good start just because, you know, I am supported with a very good team here. You know, the guys that I work with, they're very talented people and 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 very 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 uh knowledgeable people if i may you know yeah yeah, yeah. this 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 is great i mean like screw wordpress <laughs> you if you have this in joomla <laughs> if you have this thing in joomla why do you need wordpress exactly what i wanted to hear to be honest with you like i think i showed this once earlier in the in, the, in our meeting as well uh we built the the idea was making it simpler. How can we take the existing frameworks, what T3 is offering, what Gantry is offering, what Helix is offering, and what U3 and Pro is offering? How can we take all of that, but make it like WordPress? Because I always had this question in my head, like, why do people like WordPress? You know, what, what is there? And the only answer I could find was simplicity. There, it's simpler to do things. And it's not WordPress who is making things simpler. It's just the developers are making the UI much simpler. They're offering every small thing that you know, you're able to change it from the Joomla back, uh, WordPress backend. And that's what we tried to do. That's what we tried to do. Uh, what, what was I about to say? Uh, okay, I forgot what I was about to say, but yeah, this you sound week, very excited. Yeah. yeah, I am. I am. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, uh, I'm assuming that I'm one of the first movers to introduce your product, right? You're the first person to have this kind of demo. You're right. Yes. Yeah, I'm. It's good because it's gonna get me up in SEO. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm serious. Look, look. I like to find new things that other people don't have because that's the only way you'll be able to climb up in SEO. I, I, I uh, was the first person to re to review a product in Australia called Property Tree. It's a prop. It's a property management CRM. And oh because yeah. I was the because I was the first one. My article comes on top, and the only thing that comes before that is the company itself. Oh, wow. So, and that is my biggest lead magnet for website traffic. So if I'm the first one to do this YouTube video, and I'm the first one to do this, this the first one to do the blog review, uh, if, if you generate a lot of inquiries, I'm going to get lots of traffic. Of course, of course. When people are going to look for Asteroid, you know, a whole demo on YouTube, they're going to get to you know you and me, the team behind it. And obviously, along the way, they can know how the system works. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, uh, I, I think, again, you know, just going back to the original thing, I think WordPress has a lot of, lot of energetic people like you who are doing a lot of blogging, who are doing a lot of videos, who are doing a lot of podcasts just related to WordPress and development in journal. And Joomla is missing even those key elements as well. Yeah, there's this Joomla Beat guy who used to do podcast on Joomla, but I don't think he's active anymore. Um, and other I'm, than that, go ahead. I'm not that active either, but I like finding content that can't be found anywhere else. 
Right, right, right. No, I'm I'm just talking about regular updates. Of course, I'm talking about just just regular podcasts. So you know the Joomla Beat guy. If you look at uh, looking him up on iTunes, what he'd do is he'd find unique extensions. At least the last episode I listened, which was about two years back in 2016 or something, he'd find unique extensions and talk about them in the podcast, like how this extension is used for your for your website, what this extension is offering that is different than you know. Um, what's already out there. So I think Joomla is missing uh, that one of those pieces as well. So you may want to try your hand at, at that too. I think that's what I'm trying to get at. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, look, yes. uh, is there anything else you want to show me about the framework? Uh, no, I think we're all good. I, we're I all got set. an idea. I got an idea. Let's extend it this even further and give, give even more value. Why don't you just show us one of your templates in the demo? Why don't I show you one of the? I <laughs> I don't have those templates here. You, you, no, no. Uh, you can just go to the website, the, your website, and just go to the demo page, can't you? I I think one oh, of the later, the later ones you have is JDBX or something like that. Um, BizX, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can show you that. Uh, me it's one. not just about the framework; it's about the desi design. And I want to show that you've got great designs. Oh, sure, 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 sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, I, I thought that maybe you're talking about the three templates uh, that we're building on uh, on Asteroid. But okay, so this is it. Let me open up these layouts. Th this is a really cool template. I personally very much like it just, just because it has very nice layouts. Uh, the, the color, the contrast, it's just something that that uh, that is very nice, you know, that has been built in very nice. So th there's the BizX template. Yeah, it's $39. And uh, you know, or you can just subscribe for a yearly membership at ninety nine dollars, and you get all the existing twenty templates that we have, plus twelve templates for the next twelve months. You know, until you are a member, and this is one of them. This is uh, again a really, really nice template. You can see, you know, in, when you scroll down, you have the mini on the left. You have these perfect mouse over effects here, and all of this is built with page builders and modules. So you're not. Uh, uh, not a lot of this is custom modules at all. So a lot of this can easily be changed just using the Joomla backend module manager and page builder. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. And this comes in three layouts. So this is the light layout, uh, two, two layouts, I think. So this is light layout. And this one is the, <clears throat> excuse me, this one is the darker layout where you have a darker background, you know, and obviously at the top you have the slides. And then, you know, you, again, the same content, but in more a darker version, if I may. Uh, just from a design standpoint, why would you, okay, I heard someone told, tell me that light designs are, I'm more favored, but but uh, is there any? Do you agree, or, or do you think there's both, I, both light and dark uh, are equally as as good? Uh, I I I would say I'm not qualified enough to answer that. I don't have that creative eye or that creative vision that you have, or uh, my designer has. You know, uh, fortunately, all of this gets done. The Photoshop file that our designer delivers is done without any intervention from my side. He is has been doing a great job so far, and I I rather not you know bug him or get him in the place. I think it's just his visual eye. I personally do like the light ones compared to the darker ones. Uh, again, it's my personal opinion, but uh, I, I I just leave the rest to our, the designer, you know, the graphic okay. designer that we have. Okay, that's good. Is there anything else you want to mm -hmm. cover? I think we're all good. One more thing, just a plug for myself and just to see, if, just so the people who watch this video, video, YouTube video know exactly who I am. Uh, please go to my homepage. Uh, I'll give it to you now. So go, go to, the, yep, my homepage is Clarence, C-L-A-R-E-N-C-E-R-E-N-C-E-L-I-N-G-L-I-N-G.com. That's my that's my first and last name. That's my website. It's built on Country Five, but maybe next time we build on uh, Asteroid. And oh wow, yeah, that'd be exciting. <laughs> and if you go if you go down to our Joomla framework, you press read more. See read more no. up there, up there, up there. You missed you missed it. Go up. I'm sorry. Uh, point okay, our Joomla frameworks. Read more. Yep. Yeah, yep. It's coming. There you go. So the first. Oh. 
There you go. Astra is there already. Love yeah. it. Thank you. <laughs> wow, I think this is this is very really exciting. Thanks for doing that. Uh, Sakshi was the one that told me to do it and told me about Astra. I didn't know until she told me. Oh yeah. Uh, this is very exciting. Yeah, this is very exciting. I'm glad you have listed it already. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I will be using this especially uh, because it seems really powerful and it's easy. To yeah. Use. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And, and again, like I said, you know, we're only like um, the framework, the idea is decade, years old. The framework is only a month old. You know, we released the first table version on Jul June 30th. And, you know, what is it? August 4th. So we're really a month old and we are released like one major version and like five updates already. You know, so we're doing one every week and with a lot of feedback coming from valuable feedback coming from you and other uh, people on our forum as well. We're making a lot of changes. So, you know, uh, when, when you use it, you'll be expect getting weekly updates on the framework, making sure they're compatible with your existing installation and keep adding new features on and on. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Or keeping it simple, which is what you want. Yes, keeping it simple and straightforward. That we're gonna try to do that. Yes, you know it gets the, the it gets harder as you try to push for the user feedback, as you try to honor the request of your users. It get it gets harder day by day. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It gets harder day by day. Okay, I think that's everything. Yep. Uh, we're, we're gonna wrap up. Uh, uh, give me a few days or, or a week or something to to uh, first upload this video, and secondly, Please. secondly, uh, I'll make a blog post. I'll try to do it on Saturday. That's my usual <laughs> blogging day. Yeah. Uh, I actually, maybe I just say one more thing for people who use Joomla. A little bonus. Uh, now you you guys you what you obviously do SEO right uh, for yourselves. But we don't offer it as a service. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm just showing. I'm just plugging someone else's product here because this is another quality Joomla product that I cannot find in WordPress. Okay, one last plug, right. and then we we'll end. If you go go to Joost SEO, so go to your URL bar. Go to your, your. Okay, type Joost. No, no, Joost is Joost is the is the uh, the WordPress on Joost SEO. Yes. Down, uh, one, word, one, word, one word, one word, it's one word, it's not two words. Oh, okay, okay, one second. Ah, there you go. Okay, good. That's the one. Uh, that's that's Spanish, you get the English version. Uh, okay, fine, just yeah, I'll, I'll go to the English version. There you go. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, let's see about characteristics. I, I need to just show you what this is, but basically, this, this allows you to do SEO as you type. So if you aim for one specific keyword or set one or two words or whatever, how, however long it is, it gives you suggestions on SEO and readability as it goes. Oh, wow. This is the, this is the only, I only found this in Joomla. I've not found an equivalent WordPress product that does this. But if, oh, wow. if, you, if you want to optimize your SEO, uh -huh. you go here, you download the you down the file. I'll give you. I'll give. I'll give my 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 vid, uh, video users a link that will give me commission. But basically, okay. rather than do the S, the the SEO after writing the whole right. thing, yeah, because that's what you do in Joom. You want to do SEO? You know, you do your articles, and then you go to either Mijo SCF or SH404 SCF or whatever you're using, and then you you know type your uh, type everything in there. That's that's the current procedure. I think we, along with everyone else, follows. Yeah. But this one allows you to do it on the fly, so you can uh, you can mm -hmm. do SEO from scratch it, as the process goes, and to any 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 keyword that you want. Wow. And it doesn't right. just do it doesn't just do SEO. It does this readability, so it helps make it easy for users to read your article. And if they find it easy to read, mm -hmm. it's going to be very, very, very useful. And the pricing is quite competitive. It's not that expensive. I've oh, yeah. I, I didn't know about this. You know, I only uh, uh, maybe this is like a recent extension. I didn't know about. Oh wow, this is cheap. You know, this is damn cheap. This is like 10, 10 euros. Wow, this is cheap. Yeah. Yeah, and the thing, the, the, the thing is that 
I've tested this. It's pretty accurate. It's not. I don't think it's perfect, but if you use a a a uh, SEO system or SEO assessor ass, assessment software, I use mm -hmm. SEO Power Suite. If I use SEO Power Suite and do a do a page that I use Joe's SEO in, it seems to be pretty on the dot. It, oh yeah. It doesn't include too many keywords. It doesn't include too little keywords. At least that's my Got experience it. so far. So sure. That's this is just why Joomla is so great. I mean, WordPress has a lot of things that, that Joomla does not have in terms of the software, the offerings, and so on. But I think even though the community in Joomla is much smaller and there's not as many developers, there are lots of interesting things. I think we're getting there, Ferris. I think slowly and steadily we're getting there. We're give we're gonna give WordPress a hard competition. You know, the Joomla community in general. Yeah. And not only that, actually. It's a pity, but I don't. I don't know why it happened. But I did read that it used to be the case years ago that Joomla was the top. Oh yeah, back you're you're talking back. I, I'm I'm talking. So I'm not sure how long uh, back you go in Joomla, but again, I think that all the user base that Joomla lost was, uh, or when the user base was at decline, was really with the after the release of 1.67 because you couldn't migrate. There was like no like a direct migration available from 1.5 to 1.6. You have to get a developer. You had to get a developer no matter what, you know. So I think that was a real point of frustration for end clients. Hey, why why is this happening to me? Why is why am I having to get my site redone, uh, which I just got built like a year ago? I have to pay thousands of dollars just because there's a newer version available. I don't want to do that. I think that was a point when Joomla was using, uh, losing users, if I may. But other than that, I don't think the user base of Joomla, again, my personal opinion and knowledge based on what I've seen, I don't think Joomla is using losing the user base at this moment. I think the user base must have stayed same as it was in 2014 or 15. If it hasn't increased, I don't think it has decreased either. <laughs> but as a percentage, I think it's, it may be dropping. Of course. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because overall, the number of sites are increasing. Uh, the WordPress user base is increasing. That could be the reason as a percentage in comparison and with WordPress, we're dropping. But in general, I don't think the user base, the core user base, people like me and you, you know, who are like hardcore fans of Joomla are going anywhere anytime soon. Yeah, yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, very nice to meet you. Very nice to talk to you. This video is going to be very long, but it's, it's long form content is good, especially when it's yeah. very useful. Uh, I've sure. I've uh, I've been promoting these guys for a while now, and I do okay. affiliate income. But uh, if you want to just let people know, because look, this is a great product. Uh, and it's, I, you know, I think it's a great product and a, and a great price. So send me the affiliate link or when you put the video live, I'll go ahead and buy a license anyway just because I want to try it. You know, uh, you know, we, we use all the other extensions, so why not support another person in the Joomla community? Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah, okay. Okay, that's great. Uh, uh, I guess I'll, be, I'll have to do more videos like this later on, but yes, this is a very good video. This is probably going to be my best video so far because I've never really had to do something this unique before. But yeah, and you sound very exciting too. You know, your happiest video as well. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, but yeah, uh, yeah. I'm okay. Uh, maybe I'll shoot you. A, my, I'll shoot. I'll email you my affiliate link. Uh, and yeah. Then, so then, yeah, you get it from there, and you yeah. can be the first buyer. Yes, yes, definitely. Send me the affiliate link. So don't, link. So don't buy. Oh, don't buy it from them. I'll, I'll give you my affiliate link. Anyway, uh, okay. For everyone looking at this video, I hope you're excited as I am. Uh, Asteroid is, is, a, is, a, is a damn good framework. It's new, but it's really, really feature-packed and it's simple. And you'll be a silly not to try it at least once. Thank you. Thank you. I think that that does it. Sure, you're right on point. Yes, you'll be silly not to try it. <laughs> okay, okay. Very good to, 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 to like embed myself it in the Joomla community like this. Yes. Few people. It, w it was great speaking to you, Clarence. And... We shall speak again shortly, okay? All right, thank you. Uh, how do I pronounce your name? Chayden. Chayden, okay. Thank you, Chayden. All right, I'm about to end the call, right. and I'll get this video up soon. Sounds good. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.